the women can be subjected to mental cruelty for example when she is uh, continuously taunted for not bringing in enough dowry this is a kind of mental and i'm saying con- in the yesterday's class we were doing the offense of or we were reading the offense of cruelty offense of cruelty under ipc section 498 a and under bns section 85 and 86 so please open up section 85 and 86 fast open up okay chalo see when i was discussing the offense of cruelty i told you few requirements of this offense ki what are the requirements for this offense i told you few requirements so you have to tell me now ki what are the requirements of this offense to so offense jo hai kiske khilaf invoke kiya ja sakta hai or the offense of cruelty can be invoked against which people tell me husband and his relatives very good husband and his relatives so it is very important that the offense of cruelty because the language of the section says that whoever being the husband or the relative of the husband of a woman so it is very important that there shall be a marital relationship and the offense of cruelty would have been committed by either the husband or his relatives or both of them or any of them conjointly so suppose there is a friend of husband who is also an accomplice in this accomplice hota hai saajedar theek hai accomplice in the crime suppose a husband is committing cruelty on his wife and now there is a friend who is also involved in this so whether his friend will be guilty of cruelty under section 498a tell me no then is there a no offense which is committed by the friend tell me so what section or what offense has been committed by the friend tell me he has not committed cruelty because he is not the relative abatment very good beta this is an offense of abatement yes very good bachcho shabash so friend has committed the offense of abatement theek hai now second thing is i told you it is not important that the person suppose there are two cases or there are, there is a case in which a husband is lawfully married to his wife and he also keeps a second wife now according to hindu law the second wife of a person who is a hindu and the second relationship which has come into existence during the existence of the first relationship that means a husband was having a legally married wife and then he again married so this second wife is not a legally married wife this marriage is void invalid right so if a husband commits cruelty on the second wife this would also be equivalent to commission of cruelty because the court in multiple cases such as rama agrawal versus anupam 2004 stated that it is not important to whether there is a valid marital relationship between the husband and his wife if they have entered into marriage though the marriage is invalid according to law but still they are living as husband and wife or they are into a relationship which is similar to being husband and wife then if that husband commits cruelty on such women then the offense of cruelty can be invoked against such husband though they are not a legally valid or we can say they their relationship is not legally valid or recognized theek hai na husband ke upar jo hai jo second wife ke upar cruelty kar raha hai uske upar offense same hi lagega ha ho sakta hai ki the second wife will not be entitled to maintenance or share in the property because she is not a legally married wife so civil laws jo hai she will not be entitled to any civil rights but if she is or she is a victim of cruelty 
the husband will be equally liable. Now I told you cruelty according to section 85 and 86, cruelty can be of two types. So what are the two types of cruelty? Tell me, I told you, cruelty can be of two types. Yes, it could be either mental cruelty or it could be either physical cruelty or it can be both. It can be both. So it is not necessary that both of them are exclusive. It could be either physical cruelty, it could be either mental cruelty. See, mental cruelty, you know, physical cruelty is bit objective. Physical cruelty is established as easy. Why? Because a husband, if a husband is beating his wife or the relative of the husband is beating his wife. So now, obviously, there will be injuries on the body of the woman. There might, there, 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 there can be possibility in which such acts are seen by independent witnesses. So in this case, uh, proving physical cruelty is easy. But in case of mental cruelty, mental cruelty depends upon many things. Okay, mental cruelty depends upon multiple factors. Chaya is writing something. Okay. Then when I told you, both are punishable. Both are punishable. If obviously, see in multiple cases, this is the scenario in which a woman is subjected to both physical and mental cruelty. She is also mentally tortured and she is also physically tortured. So she is subjected to both mental and physical cruelty. So that is that means the offense, the requirement of this offense of cruelty has been fulfilled. So even there is no physical cruelty, but there is mental cruelty. Even then, the requirement of this offense has been fulfilled. Now, what was I was saying was that mental cruelty is a very objective thing. It's a objective thing. Sorry, it's a very subjective thing because it depends upon the educational background. social background of the girl and the couple it depends upon the nature of the girl so one act of mental cruelty or we can say suppose uh, relatives of the husband keep taunting the woman keep taunting a woman now for one woman who is of a little rigid nature or who is having or who is of mentally strong character or who is of a uh, little bit who is mentally strong she can bear these these taunts will not be having a deep invasive impact on her on her mental well-being but suppose there is a woman she is she, and she is very sensitive so even a few taunts which are given by either the husband or the relatives of the husband these taunts will have a significant impact on the mental well-being of this woman so Cruelty cannot be defined in a very objective way. It all depends upon the correct, the nature of the women, the sensitivity of the nature of the women, the educational background of the women, the social background of the women, and all these factors are important while discuss, while considering whether a particular offense is a cruelty or not, especially mental cruelty. So there can be many instances I told you where the women can be subjected to mental cruelty. For example, when she is uh, continuously taunted for not bringing in enough dowry. This is a kind of mental and I am saying continuous. Ek do bar kisi ne agar taunt maar diya, then it is not mental cruelty. Right? She is continuously tortured for or taunted for not bringing in sufficient dowry. She is taunted for not having a pure character or being unchaste. She is, suppose she is taunted that her family members are from a lower economic background. She is taunted that she belongs to a particular caste. She is taunted that she cannot reproduce a biological child. She is taunted or she is not or we can say even a husband keeping a paramour in the same house. Paramour ka matlab hota hai ki a woman who is not a legally married woman. Ab aise bhoat sare cases hote hai in which the husband keeps the paramour in the same house. Husband is legally married to a woman. Husband has an extramarital affair and he keeps that woman in the same house. Now, this is also a kind of mental cruelty to the women. A woman who is of a sensitive nature, she cannot bear that. Okay. So, all of these circumstances or we can say in one case, the court said, Ki suppose filing of a serious case against the women. 
अगर हस्बैंड ने सी वाइफ के खिलाफ जो सीरियस केस भी फाइल कर दिया सपोज सीरियस केस इन विच द वुमेन हैज टू गो टू द कोर्ट वेरी ऑफनली और शी हैज टू गो टू द पुलिस स्टेशन और वेन शे वेयर शी इज सब्जेक्टेड टू सच इनडिग्निटीज ऑल दिस आल्सो कॉन्स्टिट्यूट मेंटल क्रुएलिटी अ नॉर्मल पर्सन बिलीव मी अ नॉर्मल पर्सन डज नॉट लाइक टू गो टू कोर्ट एंड पुलिस स्टेशन only lawyers and judges enjoy going to courts and police station normal logo ko khushi nahi hoti every person uh, just avoids going to police station and the court so suppose a husband files a case against a woman or we can say his wife and in that she is accused of very serious offenses theek hai then when she has to go to the courts and this continuous tormenting it will have a deep impact on her mental well being this can also be considered to be a cruelty so there is no fixed definition of cruelty especially mental cruelty but the law is saying that the cruelty shall be of such nature which is likely true drive her to commit suicide check na which is like see now here there is one objective standard that has been provided by the law it is saying the cruelty such be of cruelty must be of such nature which is likely to drive a woman to commit suicide cruelty is prakar ki hai ki jisse tang aakar the women or jisse tang aakar there is a possibility that the women can commit suicide Uh, that means few uh, small quarrels between husband and wife which do not have a likelihood that the women better just give me a minute which do not have a likelihood that the women can commit suicide they are not cruelty wo cruelty nahi hai theek hai na secondly the conduct of the husband shall be willful willful means the husband should or the relative should intentionally conduct or behave in such a way that would drive a woman to conduct or commit suicide theek hai na main bhi samjhata hu aapko so but sir many women make fake cases of mental cruelty as well beta ye main bataunga bhi just give me a second just give me a second theek hai na main ye bhi sara bataunga ki constitutional validity of 498a because you told you you are right that there is a section that provides for protection that aims at protecting the women from being subjected to the torture either mental or physical from the side of in laws but in multiple cases the women also invoke this section which was made to protect them the court stated that this section is kind of a shield ye ek dhal ki tarah hai which is made to protect women from uh, harassment from in laws but in many cases in multiple cases the women use this as a sword isko hathiyar ki tarah prayog karti hain there is a difference between a shield and a sword a shield is used to defend a sword is used to attack so the court stated that in multiple cases the women use section of cruelty not as a shield but as a weapon of offense so ye cases hote hain main iske bare mein abhi charcha karunga just me let me finish ki cruelty hai kya theek hai na so now we first of all we'll talk about mental cruelty mental cruelty so mental cruelty ke andar what is important it is saying any willful conduct of such nature that is likely to drive the women to commit suicide so that means first requirement is there shall be a willful conduct willful means intentional conduct on the part of the husband ab is case mein suppose the relatives were sitting and they were discussing a particular event so after marriage suppose three months after marriage relatives were sitting and they are discussing a particular event regarding marriage theek hai na and they said ki in the marriage the food was not good 
and the marriage preparations were made by the uh, father of the bride now when she listens ki they are criticizing the food preparation which were made by my father now this was not this was not an intentional conduct they are just discussing ki khana acha nahi tha theek hai na now if a woman get hurt because of that this is not cruelty theek hai na because in daily life when we live each other when we live along with each other so there are multiple instances in which a person does not like the conduct of another person all of them does not constitute cruelty zaruri nahi hai ki aapko ek cheez jo hai wo meri pasand nahi aayi so that means i am committing cruelty on you so any conduct which is not willful which is not intentional or which does not have an intention to disturb the mental well being of the women that is not cruelty theek hai na there are multiple cases in which suppose a husband was posted uh, in a metro city and the women and the wife was living in a village now wife repeatedly stated to his husband that she want to live with him but he stated ki i do not have a reasonable house there i cannot just take you here now in this case husband does not have a intention to mentally harass her or mentally torment her so it cannot be said it cannot be stated to be an offense of cruelty ha huh? the women must, must be finding it mentally difficult to live separate from her husband but the conduct of the husband is not intentional wo intentionally usko pareshan nahi kar raha theek hai na so secondly suppose the husband deserts the wife husband apni wife ko chhod ke chala gaya theek hai na husband deserted the wife chhod ke chala gaya in this case can you say that the husband has committed a cruelty on her husband has committed cruelty on her wife on his wife hum kya hum keh sakte hain because you are saying that because the husband leaving her wife or deserting her wife would cause immense mental trauma to the wife and she will be uh, forced to commit suicide or it is likely to force her to commit suicide but a court stated ki this is not a case in which there was a case of mangat ram versus state of haryana the court stated ki suppose a husband removes her from the uh, habitation of her wife the husband deserts her wife husband ne apni wife ko chhod diya now in this case though this would have a severe mental impact on the well being of the wife but it cannot be stated to be a cruelty because there is no willful intention of the husband to deliberately hurt his wife mentally theek hai na he does not want to live with wife okay lekin iska matlab ye nahi ki the wife does not have an option the wife can go to the court and she can file a divorce if the husband has deserted her wife his wife so he she can go to the court and file for a divorce usko divorce mil jayega is ground theek hai na if the husband is not living with her wife it does not mean that it is cruelty ha huh. in civil law she will get a divorce usko divorce aasani se mil jayega theek hai na so in civil law it would be a wrong this is a civil wrong because in a marriage a husband and wife are bound to remain in uh, or we can say they are bound to be cohabit with each other ek sath rehne marriage also means cohabitation theek hai na if any of them deserts other so the other person who is deserted he can have civil remedies they can go to the court they can either pray for restitution of conjugal rights or they can also file divorce or judicial separation to unko wo adhikar unke paas hai but the why it does not mean that the wife is entitled to <coughs> accuse the husband of cruelty ye court ne kaha tha theek hai so if a husband deserts his wife it does not amount to cruelty under section 498 a of IPC, ठीक ना? Yet the wife has sufficient remedies in civil law that she can file a divorce, ठीक ना? अब हस्बैंड नहीं रहना चाहता तो वाइफ जो है उसका संग मैरिज के बंधन में क्यों रहेगी? She can file a divorce, but does not does not amount to the offence of cruelty, ठीक है? So there are multiple cases in which cruelty has to be find out कि whether the act of the husband or the relative would amount to cruelty. That means the act are so severe that it is likely to drive a woman to commit suicide ha huh. if she is continuously being taunted for dowry theek hai she is continuously being taunted for dowry or she is continuously being taunted for not able to produce a child biologically if she is continuously taunted from belonging to a particular caste if she is continuously taunted and harassed mentally usse zyada kaam karwate hain usko pareshan karte hain that will amount to cruelty theek hai na so the conduct of the 
हजबेंड और द रिलेटिव शुड हैव अ इंपैक्ट ऑन द वाइफ इंपैक्ट होना चाहिए ठीक है ना शुड हैव इंपैक्ट ऑन द वाइफ तो दिस अमाउंट टू क्वालिटी मेंटल क्वालिटी ठीक है ना देर वॉज अ केस ऑफ देर वॉज कॉस्ट केस इन स्टेट ऑफ हरियाणा इन विच देर वॉज देर वॉज अ कपल हजबेंड एंड वाइफ एंड नाउ द हजबेंड मैरिड अनदर वुमेन ठीक है द हजबेंड मैरिड नहीं हजबेंड वॉज हैविंग एन एक्स्ट्रा मेटल अफेयर हजबेंड वॉज हैविंग एन एक्स्ट्रा मेटल अफेयर नाउ ही वॉज हैविंग एन एक्स्ट्रा मेटल अफेयर बट ही डिड नॉट इल ट्रीटेड हर ट्रीटेड हिज फर्स्ट वाइफ so he used to come to his wife occasionally he used to spend on her maintenance that means he used to provide her the financial requirements he used to fulfill his, her financial requirements he used to did not he did not ill treat her theek hai na the only reason where the wife was uh, estranged with the husband was that he has an extra marital affair theek hai now can you tell me whether the wife can wife can why uh, sorry the wife can file a case under 498a that her husband being in an in an external marital affair is so mentally challenging to the women that it is driving her to commit suicide ha ji can we say that the husband has committed cruelty by getting into an external marital affair are the requirements of section 490a getting fulfilled tell me no yes exactly the court also stated that the husband is not ill treating the wife he is also fulfilling her financial obligations he is also living with her theek hai na now the this only act or we can say this act that he has an extra marital relation this cannot be sufficient in ordinary course of nature to drive her to commit suicide ye act jo hai ja having an extra marital affair this act in itself is not sufficient to drive her to commit suicide so section under 498 a is not invoked but the wife can take recourse to hindu marriage act and she can file for a divorce theek hai na she can file for a divorce if there are physical relationship between the husband and the uh, the lover of the husband so she can file for a divorce but the thing is ki she cannot file a case of cruelty against the husband so mental cruelty depends upon a lot of circumstances it depends upon the social background educational background the social milieu in which the couple is living the nature of the women so there are a lot of things which have to be considered to con- decide whether the willful act the intentional acts of the husband or the relatives of the husband are of such nature so as to drive a woman to commit suicide theek hai na so husband refusing to stay with wife or the husband if you staying at a separate place <clears throat> apart from the wife in all these cases the the wife can have civil remedies wo maintenance ke liye apply kar sakti hai she can apply for divorce she can apply for restitution of conjugal rights but she can apply for cruelty beta ye samajh mein aaya mental cruelty ha uh, repeatedly torturing her for repeatedly torturing her for uh, dowry that is a mental cruelty theek hai na wo mental cruelty मानी जाएगी ठीक है नाउ सेकेंड इज फिजिकल क्वालिटी फिजिकल क्वालिटी सो फिजिकल क्वालिटी मीन्स द कंडक्ट द विलफुल कंडक्ट दिस इज द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ क्लॉज ए द विलफुल कंडक्ट as is likely to cause grave injury or danger to life limb health of woman so any conduct willful conduct that means the conduct shall be intentional the conduct shall be intentional theek hai na suppose husband is driving a car and the husband and relation husband and wife are having a sore relationship unme jhagda chal raha hai for a long period of time and now the husband is driving a car and suppose he meets with an accident in which 
the wife is injured but the husband is not injured in a severe manner the husband just got minor bruises minor injuries but the wife was injured theek hai na but the thing here was it was just a piece of accident wo husband ne janboojh ke nahi kiya so can we say that the husband is has committed cruelty or the husband has conducted himself in such a manner so would or as is likely to endanger the life of women can we say this no we cannot say because the conduct was not willful accident ho gaya to ho gaya theek hai na in the similar cases at home suppose if a female sustain some injury accidentally so that is not a willful conduct on the part of the husband or the relatives but if they are physically torturing the women if they are physically torturing the women theek hai ek to usko khana hi nahi dete ऊपर से उसे बहुत काम करवाते हैं ठीक है ना और बीच में दे आल्सो बीट हर नाउ इन दिस केस द कंडक्ट ऑफ द हस्बैंड ऑफ द रिलेटिव्स ऑफ द हस्बैंड इज सच दैट इट इज लाइकली टू कॉज इंजरी और डेंजर टू द लाइफ एंड लिंब ऑफ द इंजरी एंड लाइफ एंड लिंब ऑफ द वुमेन कि दे आर आल्सो डूइंग द एक्ट ऑफ दे आर आल्सो डूइंग एन एक्ट दे आर आल्सो डूइंग इलीगल ओमिशन इट इज द ड्यूटी ऑफ द हस्बैंड टू मेंटेन हर वाइफ मेंटेन हिज वाइफ but the husband is neglecting to maintain his wife he is not providing her sufficient means he is not providing her sufficient food moreover she is made to work <clears throat> at home the nature of the work is severe thirdly they also beat her now by accumulating all of these factors it can be said that the conduct is such that is likely to cause injury to the life limb of the woman or we can say the conduct is such as which causes apprehension in a woman that if she stay with her husband her life would be in danger that mean the conduct of the husband is such that it is causing apprehension usko dar lag raha hai ki if i stay in my at my in law in law's house along with my husband my life would be in danger kyun mujhe itne maarte peette hain ki there would be a severe danger to my life so if the conduct of the husband is such that is that would amount to physical cruelty that would amount to physical cruelty theek hai na beta is samajh mein aaya physical cruelty is easy to establish as compared to mental cruelty theek hai na and the third is and the third is uh see c clause b of section 86 section 86 clause b it is saying harassment of a women where the harassment is with the now one thing is there is a harassment harassment means tormenting intimidation intimidate matlab dhamkana buri tarah dhamkana torment matlab torture karna so torturing a women or intimidating them uh, aurat ko dhamkana with a view to coerce her or any person related to her to meet a demand for property now it is specifically targeted towards where the women is tormented matlab torture karna usko torture could be a mental torture also bar 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 if you keep taunting the women that you have not brought enough dowry you have not you have failed to bring in enough dowry you have failed to bring in enough money you have failed to bring in enough jewelry so now this is this would be a mental torture this would be tormenting and intimidating matlab dhamkana usko that if you do not ask for more articles more jewelry more money from your parents 
we will either beat you we will either deny you the food or we can do any other thing to you so when a woman is tormented or when the woman is intimidated now what is the object of the relatives of the husband or the husband behind tormenting the women or harassing the women the object is to force her usko force karna or any person who is interested in her matlab uske parents uske bhai uski sister to fulfill demand of any property or valuable security theek hai na the women is tortured by the in laws and the object of the in laws is to force her parents her brother her sister to meet the demand of property or valuable security so in this case this would amount to cruelty now in this case it is not important that the women is physically tortured if they, if they are threatening her that we will torture you we will physically beat you if you do not bring in dowry or if you do not bring in money if you don't bring in a particular property if you do not bring in a particular article ki suppose husband apni wife ko keh raha hai ki mujhe and he repeatedly says ki agar tu apne ghar se 1 lakh rupaye nahi lekar aati to main tujhe marunga and the relatives of the husband are also saying the same thing now in this case what they are doing is they are intimidating the woman so that she can be forced to bring or she can be forced to meet their demands now this constitute cruelty isko bolte hain cruelty so this we have mental cruelty we have physical cruelty and third part is we have the harassment of the women and the objective of the harassment is that the in laws or the husband want that their demands of money the demands of property shall be fulfilled by the women so it teen there are three parts of mental cruelty physical cruelty mental cruelty and harassment with the purpose of fulfilling the demands of property so will my beta there are three parts of cruelty now whosoever commits cruelty the punishment is 3 years whosoever commits whosoever means the husband and the relative of the husband if they commit cruelty on the women that would be a punishment that would amount to or that would be sufficient to punish them for a period of 3 years aur uske sath mein ek aur cheez ho sakti hai now you can you tell me ki whether the women can file a divorce on the basis of cruelty suppose cruelty is proved in court of law court mein pata chal gaya ki inhone aurat ko mara kita hai so can it be a ground of divorce bataiye mujhe chaya batayegi garvita is saying yes what do you think chaya can it be a ground for divorce chaya is saying no chaya just bit up i just want you see one thing is law is law cannot be beyond common sense i'm not uh, i'm not because you are a very good person you are a person who is having a legal acumen though you have not studied law as a subject you have a good legal acumen but i'm just giving you a very ordinary piece of advice that law is 100% common sense law cannot be against common sense if the law goes against common sense then it is a wrongly decided or we can say this law is beyond the logic So now you tell me if a woman is being tortured by the husband or in laws of the husband now she files for the divorce and you are saying that she cannot file for a divorce that means she has to live with the in laws who are subjecting her to cruelty or torture is it right you just look at look it from the point of view of the women or we can just look at it from the societal point of view is it okay to force a woman to remain in that house where she is being constantly subjected of cruelty tell me is it is it i'm i'm just i'm not saying legally i'm just saying is it societally or is it ethically right to force her to stay there no so that's why the hindu marriage act says which section of hindu marriage act provide for divorce garvita ji which section provides for ah uh, very good section 13 of hindu marriage act good beta it provide for grounds of divorce chaya beta this is your job for today theek hai you pro you this is your job for today after the class you open up hindu marriage act go to section 13 of hindu marriage act so under section 13 of hindu marriage act their grounds are provided on which either of the spouse spouse can file for divorce theek hai na either of the spouse can file for divorce so cruelty is a ground for divorce also agar if it is proved that the husband has committed or the in laws of the girl are committed committing while uh, cruelty on her she can file for a divorce under hindu act if she is hindu 
ठीक है ना इफ शी इज सब्जेक्ट ऑफ एनी अदर पर्सनल लॉ सो देन दैट पर्सनल लॉ विल अप्लाई बट इफ शी इज हिंदू एंड हिंदू मीन्स हिंदू बाय रिलीजन सिख जैन बौद्ध और एनी अदर सेक्ट ऑफ हिंदू ठीक है ना एनी अदर सेक्ट ऑफ हिंदुजम सो शी कैन फाइन ठीक है नाउ आई टोल्ड यू वट इज क्वेलिटी आई हैव जस्ट गिवन फ्यू केसेज ऑफ क्वेलिटी वट वुड बी क्वेलिटी वट वुड नॉट बी अमाउंट टू अमाउंट टू क्वेलिटी और वट वुड नॉट अमाउंट टू क्वेलिटी now there are certain cases in which the validity of cruelty was challenged before the court the validity of section providing for cruelty was challenged before the court and the people who filed the petition they challenged section 498a on the ground that section 498a is there is a likelihood of misuse that there is a likelihood of misuse of section 498a the same argument that you were having garvita that women repeatedly there are women who are really subjected to cruelty but there are women also where just to <coughs> uh, just to fulfill the grudge against their in laws or just to uh, just on the ground of some vendetta or some right just to take retribution from the in laws the women file fake cases of cruelty theek hai na now there was a case, there was a petition which was filed in the court of law sushil kumar sharma versus union of india 2003 and in this case in this case the petitioner stated that there are chances that section 498 will be misused by the women the petitioner stated that there are multiple chances in which section 498a is misused by the women who on the ground of or we can say who just to fulfill their personal vendetta against in laws who file fake cases of cruelty the court stated that it is true that there are cases of cruelty there are fake cases of cruelty in which the women just to fulfill their personal vendetta file fake cases in which the husband and in laws of the women are arrested and that arrest has a deep impact on their mental well being as well as their reputation as well as their reputation but the court stated that a section of law a provision of law cannot only be held unconstitutional or it cannot be just thrown away on the grounds that there is a possibility of misuse there is a possibility of misuse of every section that is provided in bns or any other criminal law are there not rape fake rape cases there are also fake rape cases but can the court just or can the parliament just repeal the section pertaining to rape on the ground that there are also rape cases which are filed and that lead to harassment of the males so the court stated just on the grounds that there is a possibility of misuse of section 498a section 498a cannot be removed from the statute book or it cannot be held unconstitutional but the court stated ki it is the responsibility of the police officers because the first thing is the section 498a cruelty is a cognizable offense that means the police can uh, do you know understand the difference between cognizable and non cognizable i beta i'll tell you see there are two kind of the offenses are uh, categorized in two categories one is cognizable second is non cognizable in cognizable offenses the police officer has the power to arrest the accused in case of non cognizable offense the police officer can only arrest the accused and he can start the investigation when the magistrate that, uh, issues a arrest warrant theek hai na if there is uh, non cognizable cases generally are offense uh, uh, non cognizable offenses generally are those offenses which are less serious in nature so the offenses which are less serious in nature so in that case the person has to file a complaint to the magistrate and if the magistrate then looking at the complaint directs the police officer to start investigation and then issues a arrest warrant only then the accused can be arrested but in case of cognizable offenses the police officer has the power to arrest the accused without a arrest warrant theek okay? hai समझ आया हाँ सो द कोर्ट स्टेटेड कि दो फोर सेक्शन फोर नाइनटी एट एज अ कॉग्निजेबल ऑफेंस 
that means the police has the power to arrest the accused the court stated that the police shall not on every complaint and the police shall not on every complaint shall move to arrest the accused that is either the husband or the relatives of the husband the court stated that the police should uh, <coughs> be abundantly cautious in arresting the accused now there was a case in of anime singh these are very important case i will send you notes of these cases anime singh versus state of bihar 2014 in this the court issued guidelines the court issued guidelines regarding arrest in cases of section 498 a or cruelty what are those guidelines see in crpc see section 41 of crpc i am talking about crpc section 41 of crpc provides the power of a police officer to arrest a person section 41 states ki if a information regarding cognizable offense is filed with a police officer so the police officer if he has reasonable in, if he has credible information or if he has suspicion reasonable suspicion he can arrest the accused provided the punishment for the offense shall be more than 7 years ki agar koi aisa punishment offense hai jo cognizable hai aur uski punishment more than 7 years hai in that case the police officer can arrest the accused aur uske baad bhi the police officer has to see whether certain conditions are fulfilled ab dekho kya hota jab bhi aadmi arrest hota na so first thing is article 21 is violated but jab aadmi arrest ho gaya to obviously he is arrested and he is put into custody and then he is put into jail theek hai na to kya hota ki army ka jo article 21 hai that is violated so every arrest is violative of article 21 so that's why the court always say that arrest shall only be made in those cases which demand that arrest shall be made and how does a case demand so first of all it shall be a cognizable case and the punishment for the offense shall be more than 7 years thirdly there shall be certain conditions which are fulfilled ab wo kya condition hoti hai ki there is a possibility that the accused will run away wo bhag jayega accused secondly there is a possibility that the accused will tamper with the evidence ki wo evidence se chhed chhad karega there is a possibility that the accused will threaten the witness ki wo witness se chhed chhad karega ya witness ko darayega dhamkayega theek hai witness or victim or the there is a the, the offense which is uh, committed which has been committed is punishable with imprisonment for life or death तो अगर ये कंडीशंस फुलफिल हो रही हैं, ओनली देन द पुलिस कैन अरेस्ट अ पर्सन अदरवाइज क्या होता है कि पुलिस आपको नोटिस ऑफ अपीयरेंस इशू करती है अंडर सेक्शन 41 ए नोटिस ऑफ अपीयरेंस आता है इन विच द पुलिस ऑफिसर्स समन्स यू टू द पुलिस कस्टडी और द सॉरी नॉट पुलिस कस्टडी पुलिस स्टेशन क्या पुलिस स्टेशन आओ और वहां पर आकर हमारे सवालों के जवाब दो फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन ठीक है ना सो द कोर्ट स्टेटेड के दैट वेन अ केस इज फाइल्ड अंडर सेक्शन फोर ए तो अनिमे सिंह के अंदर कोर्ट स्टेटेड कि व्हेन अ केस इज फाइल्ड द पुलिस ऑफिसर दैट और हर जिले के अंदर हर स्टेशन में देयर शैल बी अ डेजिग्नेटेड पुलिस ऑफिसर ऑल द केसेस रिलेटेड टू क्रुएलिटी विल गो टू दैट पर्सन ठीक है ना इन एवरी पुलिस स्टेशन सो द पुलिस ऑफिसर शैल मेक अ चेकलिस्ट वो चेकलिस्ट बनाएगा in which <coughs> he has to mention the reasons why he is arresting the accused wo usko arrest kyon kar raha hai jaise pehli checklist ke andar wo likhega ki there is a possibility that the accused can run from the custody theek hai wo bhag jayega second possibility that he can tamper the evidence ki wo evidence se chhed chhad karega third that he can threaten the victim theek hai fourth ki wo aage bhi koi offense kar sakta hai jaise che uh, to prevent such person from committing any further offense ki wo ho sakta hai aage bhi offense kare so ye sari checklist banayengi police and if according to this checklist it is necessary to arrest the accused is checklist ke according agar 
अग्यूज को अरेस्ट करना नेसेसरी है ओनली देन द पुलिस ऑफिसर कैन अरेस्ट द अक्यूज और उसके बाद क्या होगा कि पुलिस विल सेंड दिस चेकलिस्ट एंड द रिपोर्ट एंड द रीजन फॉर अरेस्ट टू द मैजिस्ट्रेट क्योंकि क्या होता है कि वेन अ पर्सन इज अरेस्टेड ही हैज टू बी प्रोड्यूस बिफोर अ मजिस्ट्रेट विद इन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स तो जब अक्यूज को मजिस्ट्रेट के पास भेजेंगे तो वो चेकलिस्ट होगी पुलिस ऑफिसर के द्वारा बनाई गई कि वाई ही इज अरेस्टेड बिकॉज ही कैन टेम्पर द विटनेस ही कैन रन फ्रॉम द जूरी डिक्शन ऑफ द कोर्ट ही कैन कमिट फर्दर ऑफेंस ही कैन थ्रेटन द विटनेस वो सारा भेजेगा जब मजिस्ट्रेट के पास एंड मजिस्ट्रेट विल सी कि क्या रीजन थे वाई द पुलिस ऑफिसर हैज अ रीजन टू अरेस्ट द अक्यूज और इफ द मजिस्ट्रेट फील सेटिस्फाइड की यस there is a possibility that the accused can run away from the custody of the uh, that means the jurisdiction of the court tab magistrate jo hai uski further detention ko authorize karega otherwise the magistrate will not authorize the detention of the accused to ek safeguard aa gaya logo ke upar ki there is a safeguard and the police officer has to follow these directions ye jo anime singh mein gayi thi ab generally kya hua ki suppose these directions were not issued by the court to is case mein kya hoga कि ये कंप्लेंट इज फाइल्ड अंडर 498 ए इमीडिएटली द पुलिस ऑफिसर विल अरेस्ट द अक्यूज बट आफ्टर सिंह वन थिंग इज द पुलिस ऑफिसर विल हैव टू प्रिपेयर अ चेक लिस्ट इन विच ही हैज टू गिव रीजन वाई डज ही थिंक दैट अक्यूज शैल बी अरेस्टेड एंड ही हैज टू गिव दिस चेक लिस्ट टू द मैजिस्ट्रेट एंड मैजिस्ट्रेट विल सी कि वेदर देर इज द पॉसिबिलिटी दैट अक्यूज विल रन और टेम्पर द विटनेस और थ्रेटन द विटनेस टेम्पर द एविडेंस और थ्रेटन द विटनेस and if he feels ki there is a possibility tab wo magistrate will authorize the detention of the accused to ye safeguard aaya ki nahi aaya is it not a safeguard from arbitrary arrest by the police tell me is it a safeguard or not ye safeguard hai chaya what do you think yes it is a safeguard so the court ordered gave these directions regarding arrest in the case of anime singh uske baad ek aur case file hua rakesh rajesh sharma versus state of up in 2017 in this case the court uh, laid down additional safeguards कोर्ट ने कुछ और सेफ गार्ड्स बता लगा दिए रिगार्डिंग अरेस्ट दैट मींस इफ अ कंप्लेंट इज फाइल्ड अंडर सेक्शन 498 ए द कोर्ट स्टेटेड कि अरेस्ट विल नॉट बी डन अंटिल एंड अनलेस दिस कंडीशंस आर फुलफिल्ड पहली इन एवरी डिस्ट्रिक्ट देयर विल बी अ फैमिली वेलफेयर कमेटी Second, every complaint regarding 498A will be sent to Family Welfare Committee. ठीक है ना? Third, the Family Welfare Committee will try to check the veracity of complaint. Veracity मतलब तो सच्चाई. they will talk with the accused they will talk with the victim theek hai na uske baad they will send the report to the police officer or magistrate theek hai so now the the court stated ki uh, on every complaint under section 498a the person will not be automatically arrested There will be a family welfare committee in every district. उनके पास कंप्लेंट जाएगी वो उस कंप्लेट की सच्चाई को चेक करेंगे एंड विद इन आफ्टर वन मंथ विद इन वन मंथ दे हैव टू गिव देयर रिपोर्ट कि ये कंप्लेंट सच लगती है या नहीं लगती आफ्टर दैन द लीगल प्रोसीडिंग कैन बी स्टार्ट ठीक है ना अब इस केस में क्या हुआ और उसके बाद कोर्ट सेटेड कि अगर इफ देर इज अ कॉम्प्रोमाइज बिटवीन हस्बैंड एंड वाइफ तो जो सेशन जज होगा ही कैन क्वैश द केस सेशन जज जो है वो केस को क्या कर देगा खत्म ही कैन क्वैश द केस अब ये गाइडलाइंस दे तो दी सुप्रीम कोर्ट इशूड द गाइडलाइंस इन इन द केस ऑफ राजेश 
मार्वर्सी स्टेट ऑफ यूपी राजेश शर्मा वर्सी स्टेट ऑफ यूपी अब इसको गाइडलाइंस को भी चैलेंज किया गया द पीपल द पटिशनर स्टेटेड कि दीज आर एक्स्ट्रा लीगल गाइडलाइंस इन सीआरपीसी देयर इज नो सच प्रोविजन ऑफ फॉर्मिंग एनी फैमिली वेलफेयर कमेटी जब लॉ ने व्हेन द पार्लियामेंट हैज नॉट मेड एनी रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ एस्टैब्लिशिंग अ फैमिली वेलफेयर कमेटी व्हाई इज द कोर्ट एस्टैब्लिशिंग दिस द पटिशनर स्टेटेड कि दिस इज एन एक्स्ट्रा लीगल मेजर ये लॉ में नहीं है कोर्ट अपने आप ये बीच में लोगों को लेकर आ रही है इन अ लीगल प्रोसेस सो द कोर्ट इन केस ऑफ सोशल एक्शन फॉरम फॉर मानव अधिकार वर्सेस मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ लॉ एंड जस्टिस स्टेटेड कि यस दिस फैमिली वेलफेयर कमिटीज दीज आर एक्स्ट्रा लीगल ये एक्स्ट्रा लीगल है द लॉ डज नॉट प्रोवाइड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ फैमिली वेलफेयर कमेटी फैमिली वेलफेयर कमेटी नहीं बनाई जाएगी आज के बाद because until unless the family welfare committee submits a report the neither the police officer neither the magistrate can do anything with, with regard to the complaint to ek bekar mein police officer aur magistrate ki power ke upar ek additional restraint dal diya gaya and the law does not provide so why does the supreme court is hell bent on inserting this extra safeguard theek hai na so the court stated this family welfare committee is extra legal so there is no need of family welfare committee so no family welfare committee the provision the direction is quest khatam kar diya but the court stated ki the directions in animesh singh case kaun sa animesh singh that we have read the direction in this case of animesh singh ki jahan par the police officer will make a checklist then we he will give the reasons that why he is arresting the accused then he will give this checklist to the magistrate then the magistrate will also inquire ki whether arrest is necessary or not and then the magistrate will authorize the arrest of the person so the court stated ki jo animesh singh ke na directions di gayi thi unko follow kiya jaye there shall be followed theek hai na and if there is a compromise between husband and wife if there is a compromise between husband and wife then the high court under section 482 crpc can quash the fir high court jo hai wo fir ko quash karte hai fir ko quash karne ka matlab hai the legal proceedings are quashed now generally in multiple cases what happens ki there is a family dispute there is a marital discord the women files a case under cruelty now within a few period of time there is a compromise जब कॉम्प्रोमाइज हो जाता है तो व्हाट हैपेंस कि नाउ दिस पार्टी अप्लाई टू द हाई कोर्ट कि अब केस को खत्म कर दो तो द कोर्ट स्टेटेड कि ओनली द हाई कोर्ट हैज द पावर अंडर सेक्शन 482 सीआरपीसी टू क्वेश द प्रोसीडिंग्स तो इन केस देयर इज अ कॉम्प्रोमाइज बिटवीन द वुमेन एंड द और द वुमेन एंड द एंड हर हस्बैंड सो द हाई कोर्ट कैन क्वेश द एफआईआर अंडर सेक्शन 482 ऑफ सीआरपीसी सो दीस वर द गाइडलाइंस और दिस इज अ नाउ दिस इज अ लीगल फ्रेमवर्क दैट Whenever a complaint under Section 498 A is filed, in that case, what happens? One thing that no immediate arrest. The police officer will make a checklist. In that checklist, he will give reasons why arrest is important. Then he will forward this checklist to the magistrate along with the accused. Now the magistrate will see that if there is sufficient information. to prove that the person shall be or the there is if there is sufficient information to uh effectuate the arrest of the person ki ha conditions aisi hain ki is aadmi ko arrest karna chahiye if not then the high the magistrate will set the person out on bail wo usko bail pe riha kar dega theek hai na and if there is a compromise between husband and wife then they can approach the high court and the high court can क्वेश द प्रोसीडिंग्स अंडर सेक्शन 482 सीआरपीसी हाई कोर्ट जो है वो अफेयर को खत्म कर देगा दैट मींस नो लीगल प्रोसीडिंग्स विल बी स्टार्टेड अगेंस्ट द हस्बैंड और द रिलेटिव्स ऑफ द हस्बैंड तो बेटा ये समझ में आया
the directions of the code regarding probability the directions regarding 498 a okay now after reading about probability we will move to an offense which is section 74 that is assault or use of criminal force is my question I have two women with the intent of outraging her modesty the intent of outraging her now what does it mean it is saying if a person with an intention or knowledge so there is a two there is a two, second two types of menstrual a person with intention or knowledge either assault or applies criminal force and which results in insulting the modesty of women now the person has committed the offense under section 74 now the first thing is samajh mein aata criminal force samajh mein aati hai what is criminal force what is assault theek hai na suppose i push a person i have applied a force on that person and the the person has got into motion wo ek aadmi khada hua tha main usko dhakka diya i have applied my force and because of my force the person went into motion wo ekdam se hil gaya na so this is criminal this is force and my, my objective was to hurt that person or to annoy that person so it became a criminal force to ek aadmi mera friend mere samne khada aur usko maine zor se dhakka mara aur aage ja ke gira now what i have done is because of my pushing i have uh, uh, caused motion in my friend wo motion mein aage ekdam halchal mein aa gaya and my objective was to hurt him so it became criminal force so whosoever applies a criminal force on women jaise aurat ko pakad ke khinch liya ya usko push kar diya ya dhakka de diya theek hai this became a criminal force applied on women ya suppose somebody is restraining her usko janboojh ke jo hai wo daboch rahe hain daba rahe hain so this became uh, or this is a use of criminal force on women now whosoever causes applies criminal force on women theek hai na aur assault on women with an intention and knowledge ki whether he has an intention jaan bujh ke waisa kar raha hai or with the knowledge that means he has a knowledge that he will insult the modesty of women or outrage the modesty of women now what do you mean by outraging the modesty of women see outraging the modesty of women has been defined by the code in these sense The court has stated modesty means modesty or is the virtue of being a woman. Modesty is associated with an individual because she is a woman. So this is a virtue that is associated with a person of be by her being a female or woman. मोडेस्टी में का कोई खास डेफिनेशन नहीं है बट द कोर्ट स्टेटेड मोडेस्टी मींस दैट इट मींस अ समथिंग व्हिच इज रिलेटेड टू अ वुमेन फॉर एग्जांपल वी कैन एसोसिएट विद वुमेन अ हाई मोरल वैल्यूज हाई चेस्टिटी ऑफ कैरेक्टर वी कैन एसोसिएट दैट अ वुमेन इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू गिव गिव अ वेरी reprehensible reaction to all the outrageous things that is committed on her ki suppose there are two people who are talking some obscene things and if they are talking in front of women now naturally a woman is uh, supposed to give or women is likely to give a reaction of disgust usko bura lagega she will not enjoy all of these things naturally i am saying theek hai na now because she has modesty a trait of being modest it is a virtue which is associated with every woman because she is a so all the things all the 
we can say all the coarse things all the rough things she has an aversion to those things because she is a woman jo ghatiya cheeze hain wo mahila jo hai wo uske paas nahi hai that's why she is a woman and she has a modesty and who so ever outrages this modesty koi bhi agar is out modesty ko outrage karne ka prayas karta outrage means that you are trying to impact this or in, uh, attack this modesty this become this offense ab outrage the modesty of women kaise hua ki suppose there is a person and he pulled a women with an intention he is standing in front of suppose there is a person who is standing in a metro now the metro is moving now i'm talking about this based on case laws main apne man se nahi bana raha theek hai now what happens and this was stated by court in shamshir ramesh versus state of haryana 1984 ki suppose there is a woman and a man deliberately intentionally just uh, rolls his hand over her belly usko jaan kar kamar se pakad raha over her waist with an intention with a deliberate act jaan boojh kar now what he is doing is he is applying a force on women with an intention to outrage her modesty usko pata hai ki if he touch a women inappropriately deliberately so obviously her modesty will be outraged ki she is likely to react in a very negative manner or she will react in a very negative manner usko pasand nahi aayega theek hai na suppose there is a person who is standing in front of me pasand to ye ladke ko bhi nahi aayega ki suppose there is a guy who is standing who is standing next to you and he deliberately touches you they even the guys don't like this theek hai na but suppose this is done to a woman who is standing adjacent to you and you deliberately pulls her you deliberately pushes her now all these acts which are done with deliberate intention of outraging her modesty modesty means a trait which is associated with women because she is a woman uske ek respect hai there is a modesty of a woman which shall not be violated suppose there are there are people who are in who in front of women are cracking lame jokes obscene things theek hai na now in this case also what they are doing is ye section to invoke nahi hoga but there is separate section of section 78 79 sorry which means words which are spoken with an intention of outraging the modesty of a women ab suppose a women is standing in front of you and you use a very abusive language you use deliberately so that she can hear it jaan bujh kar aap bol rahe ho ki wo aisi baat ko sune or you use a very vulgar language with an intention that she should listen it wo sune is cheez ko now what you have done is by using those abusive and vulgar language you have insulted the modesty of women because the law and the society presumes that with a woman there is a certain modesty and you should or you should behave with a woman with a certain sense of modesty theek hai na so whosoever behaves in such a manner which is outrageous to the modesty of women which is insulting to the modesty of women now he has committed a crime or when he commits the crime by <coughs> assaulting her or by applying criminal force on her so this became an offense of outraging the modesty of women intentionally using criminal force or assault or by assaulting her theek hai na i to i gave you example ki so there is a women there was a case of sps rathor versus cbi sps rathor versus cbi now in this case what happened there was a very high ranking officer and uh, he was supervising the female tennis players so when female tennis players were playing he went near to a girl and he put his hand along her waist and he pulled him pulled her and when the when a boy came because in that court only that girl was there so when a boy accidentally came into that court so he released her now in this case what he has done is he has used he has intentionally apni usne ichcha se kiya he has intentionally used a force on women used a force on women criminal force on women now abhi jab usne when he pulled the girl closer to him without her consent by just grabbing her from waist now what he has done is he has done an act which is outrageous to the modesty of women no women will like that any person any strange person would commit such an act on women to ye kya kiya usne he has outraged he has outraged the modesty of ठीक है इन द सेम मैनर देर वॉज अ गाय नाउ द थिंग इज 
बेटा यहां तक समझ में आया कि वॉट इज आउटरीजिंग मोडेस्टी ऑफ वुमेन ओके सो अगेन आई एम टेलिंग यू इट इज द एक्ट शैल बी इंटेंशनल वो इंटेंशनल होना चाहिए ठीक है ना इट शुड नॉट बी एक्सीडेंटल सपोज यू आर स्टैंडिंग इन गाइ स्टैंडिंग इन मेट्रो एंड एक्सीडेंटली बिकॉज द मेट्रो अप्लाइड द एमरजेंसी ब्रेक्स बिकॉज ऑफ दैट द गाय फेल ऑन द गर्ल हु इज स्टैंडिंग नेक्स्ट यू नाउ इन दिस केस इफ द गाय हैज डन इट डेलीबरेटली उसने जानबूझ के किया होता तो दिस वुड हैव बीन ऑफेंस अंडर सेक्शन सेवेंटी फोर बट देर वॉज नो डेलीबरेट इंटेंशन ऑफ द गाय ही फेल एक्सीडेंटली बिकॉज द मेट्रो द ड्राइवर ऑफ द मेट्रो अप्लाइड एमरजेंसी ब्रेक्स सो नाउ इन दिस केस देर इज नो इंटेंशनल आउटरीजिंग ऑफ पॉलिस ठीक है ना तो इस केस में सेक्शन विल नॉट बी इन्वोक्ट देर वॉज अ केस इन विच स्टेट ऑफ पंजाब वर्सेज मेजर सिंह नाइनटीन सिक्सटी सेवन नाउ देर वॉज अ केस इन विच देर वॉज अ मैन देर वॉज अ ग्रोन मैन ही वेंट टू अ रूम इन विच अ गर्ल The girl was just a toddler, approximately one one and half year of age, and she was lying, not even one year. She was smaller, seven months, eight months. Now this man went to the girl, and he just started poking his her private parts. The girl was just of seven to eight months. See, see the kind of promiscuity these guy have, these guys have. See, he, he started the, he started teasing the, or we can see it. He started poking the private part of the girl. Now in this case, the question came before the court because the girl who is just of seven to eight months, she has not developed any sense of modesty. Now the thing here is, ki why suppose there there are two people who are standing. There is a guy who is standing in a metro. There is a uh, there is in front of him a guy is standing and in front of him a girl is standing. If he deliberately grabs the woman, he deliberately grabs the woman. This would be offence under this section, but if he deliberately grabs a man, there is no offence under any section of IPC. Okay, ha. Criminal force lag jaye to lag jaye. Otherwise, this offence will not be. Uh, this act will not be punishable under section seventy nine of BNS. Why not in case of man? Why in case of women only? Because again, I am telling you, ki the law or the we can say the ethical values or the moral values in the society and the law also recognizes that a woman has a certain modesty just being a woman uh, associates you or just being on just being a woman you are provided with a certain modesty which shall be respected by everyone whenever a person is speaking to a female whenever a person is acting with a female so there is a modesty which shall always be maintained you cannot act in the same manner you cannot apply the same or we can say you cannot physically use or physically act in the same manner with the guy as with the girl being with the suppose there is a friend of mine ab hum ek dusre ko dhakka bhi maar denge ek dusre ke gaal bhi kheech lenge ek dusre ko ek dusre ki taang utha ke ek dusre ko patak bhi denge if i do a same thing with a girl or if a person does a same thing with a girl without the consent of the girl this is outraging the modesty because a girl is not supposed to be uh, we can say touched a girl is not supposed to be acted in such a manner that have a negative or that we can say that have a negative reaction from her side ki which she does not like okay na if same act is committed on a man the man out obviously the man would also be offended but the law is not presuming a modesty a same level of modesty on a man as with the woman so modesty is a trait which is specifically given to a or which is specifically attributed to a woman so now the question before the court in this case is modesty ki baat kar rahe hain to mai lagta hai ki because a woman has a certain modesty and she get offended by a certain act that why that's why the person who has committed that act shall be punished but suppose a girl who is just 7 to 8 months of, whose age is just 7 to 8 months now she has not developed any sense of modesty ye argument samajh mein aa raha hai have you seen the argument of the defense they are saying modesty hum associate karte to a woman but the thing here is ki a girl who is from 7 to 8 who is just of 7 to 8 months she has not developed any sense of modesty so can the person who has uh, abused the girl physically can he be stated to have committed 
ऑफेंस अगेंस्ट द ऑफेंस आउटरेजिंग मॉडस्टी ऑफ वुमेन हाँ जी वट डू यू थिंक बिकॉज द गर्ल हैज नॉट येट डेवलप देंस ऑफ मॉडस्टी सो कैन यू से गाय हु हैज कमिटेड अ आउटरेजियस एक्ट विद द गर्ल सपोज अ गर्ल इज जस्ट ऑफ वन एंड हाफ ईयर टू ईयर She has not still developed a sense of modesty. So, क्या उस आदमी को same punishment मिलेगी as he would have been punished if we had done the same act with a girl who is mature, who is capable of understanding the nature of that. हाँ जी, what do you think? You are saying yes. Garvita, what do you think? No, I am not talking about Poxo. I am not talking about any other act. I am just saying, just keep your attention on this point. कि वेदर अ गर्ल हु इज नॉट एबल टू और टू अंडरस्टैंड कि वॉट इज और द फिजिकल एक्ट दैट इज कमिटेड ऑन हर आर आउटरेजियस सो कैन यू से द पर्सन हुज कमिटेड सच एक्ट ऑन वीमेन हैज आउटरेज द मोडेस्टी जस्ट की फोकस ऑन मोडेस्टी मुझे किसी और बात में आई नॉट सेंग की हिदल बिहेल बी पनिश अंडर पॉक्सो और एनी अदर एक्ट आई एम जस्ट सेंग कि क्या उसने मोडेस्टी को आउटरेज की है ऑफ अ गर्ल हु डज नॉट अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज मोडेस्टी Thaya is saying no. Garvita is saying no. Okay. So suppose there is a guy, there is a girl who is suppose who is sleeping and she is in deep sleep. Okay. Or suppose a girl who is in inebriated state of uh, mind. कि वो नशे में. And a guy comes and he make he makes unwanted sexual advances on both of this girl. Guy girl who is sleeping. Secondly, a girl who is in state of uh, who is in inebriated state of mind uh, both of them at that point of time cannot or uh, we can say with respect to both of them we cannot say that their modesty has been outraged because they are not in their senses so can we say that their modesty this because of this unwanted physical acts of the guy whether the outer modesty of the women has been outraged at that point of time when they were not in their senses you tell me can we say this Garvita is saying no. Chaya is saying no. Why? I don't understand why. The court state the reaction of the woman is not important because though the woman is in such a state where she cannot or where. Uh, she cannot understand the consequences where she is not able to she where she is not even aware of what is happening to her suppose she is in she is in state of sleep, sleep she is in she is sleeping or she, she suppose she is in inebriated state but still the person who is committing the act on her he knows that what he is committing is outrageous to a woman normally even though the girl is not in her senses even though the girl is not in a state of awareness but the guy who is intentionally committing all these acts on the girl is he not committing an outrageous act tell me he is so when he is committing an outrageous act so shall he not be punished yes so here obviously a guy who is doing an outrageous act with a woman intentionally he shall be punished no matter what is the reaction of the women because suppose there is a guy there is a girl who is in hospital and she has been given anesthesia by the doctor and the doctor stated that she will not wake up after uh, she will not wake up on that day she will wake up after 12 hours or 18 hours now a ward boy comes and he commits this outrageous act on the women theek hai na knowing that she is not going to wake up before 18 hours that means the girl will not be able to uh, girl will not be able will not be aware of what has been done on her so can we say just because the girl is not aware it gives a license to the guy to do whatever he want and he will not be punished under law what do you think can we give can it can just a state of a girl or can it just a state of unawareness on the part of girl be a license or be a exemption for the boy to commit any act on her which are outrageous tell me no because though the girl is in the girl is out of awareness the girl the girl is not in a state where she can develop awareness at that particular moment but the boy has that awareness theek hai na ha but when there is no deliberate intention of the guy us case mein he will not be punished usko punish nahi kiya jayega but when he does these things intentionally 
then it does not matter whether the girl was conscious whether the girl was in her senses or not he has still outraged the modesty of women because he was not supposed to do all of these things to a woman without her consent theek hai na so the court stated in all these cases in the state of especially in the state of case of state of punjab versus major singh ki even when a girl is sleeping even when there is a old woman who has passed her age and who is not aware of her circumstances or even if a girl who is just 7 to 8 months of age she cannot understand ki what is being done on her even in the cases of these women if any outrage is done act is done on them intentionally that would amount to assaulting or using criminal force to outrage the industry in modesty of women because the question is not of the reaction of the girl the question is not how the girl will feel the question is the intention of the guy who commits those acts the intention of the guy the act of the guy which have been committed by him intent by him intentionally on the women aage chale isko samajhne mein koi dikkat to nahi hai any doubt regarding this next is sexual harassment see earlier before 1983 uh, there was no offense of sexual harassment right before 1983 i'll let you know when this act was added when this offense was added in ipc <clears throat> the offense of sexual harassment was not there before 2013 it was not there before 2013 right so only then there was if any of such act which impacted the or which outrage the modesty of women if the person committed any of such act then that person would have been committed by committed or then such person have been punished under other laws such as grievous hurt hurt using criminal force but now specific offenses have been inserted in the ipc theek hai ab ek offense usme hai sexual harassment the offense of sexual harassment this was also inserted after the nirbhaya rape case sexual harassment section 75 of the bns section 75 of bns sexual harassment now sexual harassment just look at the section this is look at section 75 of bns which is talking about sexual harassment it is saying a man committing any of the following acts so again this is a gender oriented law so here the accused will always be a man a man committing a four category of acts so there are only four category of acts which falls in which falls within the definition of sexual harassment all of the other acts will fall within the category of outraging the modesty of women intentionally by using force okay so there are four acts which are considered to be which are considered to be an offense of sexual harassment one is physical contact and advances involving unwelcome and explicit sexual overtures second is a demand or request for sexual favors third showing pornography against will and fourth is making sexually colored remarks so these four acts which are committed by a guy which are committed by a man <coughs> are considered to be acts of sexual harassment if these are committed on a woman first is physical contact physical contact and advances involving unwelcome and explicit sexual overtures so now what is important is physical contact and advances involving unwelcome 
and explicit sexual overtures so now suppose a guy is trying to establish a physical contact with the girl theek hai na physical contact with the girl involving explicit sexual overture that means physical contact shall be there secondly the physical contact shall be of such a nature which have some sort of or which have an element of sexual overtures in it Now suppose there is a guy who is standing next to a girl in a metro and both of them accidentally came in a contact with of each other physically now in this case though there is a physical contact between a girl and the guy but there are no sexual overtures in this there are no sexual overtures in this now in a case where a guy deliberately holds a woman and pulls her close to him now in this case the act of making contact with the woman the act of making contact with the woman is deliberate and it has an element of sexual overtures dono fark samajh aaya physical contact can be by any means ab ho sakta hai ki accidentally you clash with the woman there are multiple cases but in that case you do not have any explicit sexual overtures suppose a woman is going and she fell down wo gir gayi theek hai na and out and she became unconscious and she faints now there is no one there so you just pick up the woman and you take her to the restroom or you can say you take her to the dispensary now in this case you had made a physical contact with the woman but first thing is there is no element of sexual overtures in that contact so that would not amount to sexual harassment beta ye clear hua so what is important is physical contact and advances involving unwelcome and explicit sexual overtures so it is important that there shall be physical contact and the physical contact shall be of such a nature which have an element of sexual overtures in it any other physical contact which does not have any element of sexual overtures is not a case of physical of sexual harassment Now, suppose a doctor is operating on a woman wo operate kar raha hai and he suppose he is diagnosing the woman ab wo diagnose jab women ko kar raha hai to obviously baat hai doctor has to develop a physical contact ab suppose jab khansi hoti hai to doctor keep the stethoscope at the back and then he ask you to just <clears throat> take long breath ab is case ke andar though there is a physical contact but the contact is not made with an intention of establishing or the contact is not having any element of sexual overtures the intention of a doctor is to diagnose the patient so it cannot be stated to be a case of sexual harassment theek hai na but when the doctor is or suppose a medical practitioner is deliberately doing it uh, now how can we know that it is deliberate it all depends on facts and circumstances of the cases theek hai na there cannot be a rule of thumb there cannot be a hard fast rule which is deliberate and which is not so it all depends upon <coughs> the cases second is demand or request for sexual favors now just requesting a women or demanding a sexual favors from women is also sexual harassment so in this case no physical contact is established by the guy and no act of sexual promiscuity is done on the women but just by demanding or just by asking or demanding or requesting sexual favors from a women will amount to sexual harassment because of if a sexually explicit demand is made made to a women it would be so outrageous to a modesty of women as any other physical act theek hai na it would be outrageous to the modesty of women so any demand or request for sexual favors which is unwelcome unwanted if the women feel that it is so outrageous to her it would also amount to the offense of sexual harassment third is showing pornography against the will showing of pornographic material to the women against her will deliberately suppose a person has abducted a girl and first of all he has committed the offense of abduction secondly without her will he is showing her pornography so along with abduction he is also he also has committed an act of sexual harassment ha uske baad mein if he does any other thing he will be punished for that also okay and fourth is making sexually colored remarks anything that is uttered in the presence of women that is heard by a women and that is sexually colored theek hai na that also amounts to sexual harassment so any person who commits the offense specified in clause 1 to 2 or 3 punishment is 
up to three years and any person who commits offense which is provided in sub, uh, subsection 4 or clause 4 the offense is the punishment is up to one year okay so only these four acts are considered see ab, ab in this case except from sex clause 1 there is no element of even physical contact with the women passing a sexually colored remark secondly showing pornographic material third is making a demand for sexual flavors there is no physical contact with the women yes or no tell me so even then the person will be punished for committing offense of sexual harassment in case of using force or assault to outrage the modesty in that case it is important that see a person can only use criminal force where he would cause a motion and without using his own motion he cannot cause a motion in another person so in case of criminal force one thing that is required is that there shall be a, some sort of physical contact but in case of sexual harassment except Clause 1, there is no element of physical advancement, physical contact, but still the acts are so outrageous to the modesty of women, such as demand for sexual favor, showing pornographic material, making sexually colored remarks, that without any explicit physical contact, even a verbal, or we can say a verbal contact, or just making her show a pornographic material or just demanding a sexual flavors are also included in the category of sexual harassment. Okay, there was a case <clears throat> Rupan Bajaj Deol versus KPS Gill. Rupan Deol versus KPS Gill. Now this what happened this KPS Gill was otherwise a very decorated police officer. He was a director general of Punjab when Punjab was reeling under insurgency. The Punjab mein terrorism tha, insurgency thi. during the time of 80s and early 90s, he was the director general of Punjab. And this guy has succeeded in bringing down insurgency in Punjab. This guy has to be credited in establishing peace in Punjab. But one incident which he committed deliberately defamed him. What was that? He was a DGP, senior IPS officer. So he was having a meeting of these bureaucrats in which there were many IPS officers and there were many IS officers. So he was having a meeting and in which there was a young IS officer. Her name was Rupal, Rupal, Rupal Deol Bajaj. And she was also present in the meeting. So according to her, <coughs> KPS Gill asked her to sit adjacent to him. And he deliberately pulled her chair close to closer to him when she tried to move away uh, using force he two or three multiple times he pulled the chair closer to him and when she moved uh, away from kps gill she stated that he patted me on the back he patted me at the posterior okay now now she was a is officer he was, he was a young is officer but kps gill was also a very decorated police officer so now she tried to file a complaint. None of the police officer filed the complaint. Now she went to the court of CGM. She has to approach the court of chief judicial magistrate just to file a complaint because KPS Gill was a, such a senior police officer. So now she went to the, the KPS Gill moved to high court and he got the FIR cancelled under section 482. High court stated that the offense is very trivial one. Chota's offense hai. He has just patted on the back. So it is not a major offense. So the high court cancelled the FIR. Now the matter went to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court filed, gave a direction of filing of FIR against KPS Gill. He convicted KPS Gill of sexual harassment. But because he was such a decorated police officer, so he was convicted, but he was not punished. Rather, a fine law of two, I think two lakh rupees was imposed on KPS Gill. The court stated that even a person of such repute, even if he is convicted by the court, it is a sufficient punishment for a person of a stature who is so decorated. And the court imposed fine and the court ordered that the fine shall be given to Rupan Bajaj Deol. She did not take the fine 
then the she did not took the amount of fine or the money so the court directed that the money shall be given to any welfare women welfare organization so an event of petting by a person was considered to be an act of sexual harassment so the in case of sexual harassment no trivial act not even a trivial act chotes act ko bhi excuse nahi kiya ja sakta so kps gill was a dgp of punjab that time he was a highly decorated police officer and not just police officer he was successful in curbing insurgency in punjab even then he was convicted for sexual harassment okay <clears throat> so now the thing here was she was also a ias officer her husband was also an ias officer so she was able to fight the case if it was an ordinary woman she would have she would not, have never been able to fight this case theek hai na ha wo ias officer thi uska husband ias officer i think he was ias officer or ips officer so they were able to pursue the case police ne fir nahi likhi unki the fir has to be filed through c court of cgm high court ne quash kar di fir then the matter went to the supreme court supreme court gave a judgment <coughs> that any act which is outrageous to a woman even a trivial act jaise back pe pat karna this is also punishable and he was punished so beta aage chale shall we move forward now there is a one section voyeurism just look at section 77 just look at section 77 voyeurism the voyeurism means watching a women or capturing the image of i'm, to, I'm just i'm just telling in a very simple language watching a women or capturing the photo of a women और डिसेमिनेटिंग डिसेमिनेटिंग मतलब होता है कि इंटरनेट पे या कहीं भी उसको पब्लिश करवाना भेजना डिसेमिनेटिंग द इमेज ऑफ अ वेमेन व्हेन शी वाज इन हर प्राइवेट व्हेन शी डज नॉट एक्सपेक्ट एनीवन टू वॉच हर और सी हर ठीक है ना व्हेन शी डज नॉट एक्सपेक्ट एनीवन टू वॉच और सी हर नाउ इट सेज हु एवर वॉचेस और कैप्चर्स द इमेज ऑफ अ वेमेन एंगेजिंग इन अ प्राइवेट एक्ट इन सरकमस्टेंसेस where she would usually have the expectation of not being observed now you see the law is giving such importance to the modesty of a woman the law is attaching such importance to the modesty of women that the law recognizes that there can be certain moments in which the woman does not want anybody to observe her she want that she shall be left with her privacy for example she, suppose she is bathing bathing ठीक है और सपोज शी इज फील्डिंग द चाइल्ड सो नो इन दिस केस शी डज नॉट वांट एनीबॉडी टू वॉच हर सो इन दिस केस इफ समबडी वॉचेस हर कैप्चर्स द फोटो और डिसेमिनेट्स द फोटो इन दैट केस द पर्सन विल बी पनिश्ड विद एन ऑफेंस ऑफ वोयरिज्म एंड द पनिशमेंट इज ऑन फर्स्ट कन्विक्शन द पनिशमेंट इज अप टू वन 3 ईयर एंड ऑन सब्सिक्वेंट पनिशमेंट कि आदमी बदतमीज है फिर भी नहीं हटा देन द पनिशमेंट इज नॉट लेस देन 3 ईयर्स बट अप टू 7 so let us read the section whoever watches or captures the image of a woman engaging in a private act in circumstances where she would usually have the expectation of not being observed either by the perpetrator or by other person at the behest of the perpetrator or disseminates such image ki person either watches her either captures the image or if he is if even if he has not watched her or captured her image but he has got the image uske phone mein image hai if he disseminates to usne kaam kya kiya he has just disseminated that image shall be punished on first conviction the punishment is up to 1 year up to 1 from 1 to 3 year so now the people you have seen many activities on internet you must be aware aware of that where there are consensual acts between two mature individual a guy and a girl and the guy usually take the video or captures the image now this is an offense of voyeurism that if you have captured the image of you being in a intimate uh, situation with a girl and without her consent if you aapne image capture ki with the consent but you disseminated the image without her consent that is also the offense of voyeurism what is saying see look at explanation 
where the victim consents to the capture of the image or any act so she is not repulsive of or she is consenting to the capture of image but not to their dissemination to third person and where such act is disseminated or such image is disseminated such dissemination is called as voice theek hai na so whosoever this is you know in this world of social media and the in this world of information technology some guys usually commit this offense that they do they while indulging in some sort of private act they captures the image and then they without the permission of the girl disseminated now the thing here is the law presumes that because a female has a dignity she is in a private act out of her consent but she does not want that whole of the world shall view the private act so if a person disseminates such act or image that would be offense of voyeurism and the person can be punished for a punishment up to 3 year theek hai so got the point voyeurism what is voyeurism what is offense of voyeurism and the last offense for today is dowry death dowry death so this is an offense also this is also an offense which unfortunately have impacted girls or women out of proportion section 80 of bns and section 304 b of ipc dowry death see <clears throat> this section is specifically designed or made to cater to those situations in which a woman is either killed or she commits a suicide because of request of dowry by her by her in laws where she is forced to bring in dowry where she is forced to bring in property and because of that harassment and that torture either or because of with the objective of bringing in money either she is killed either she is uh, or secondly she her kills herself wo khud mar gayi so suppose <clears throat> a woman has committed suicide because she was tortured in such a manner that it resulted in extreme mental harassment and she committed suicide so the person will be punished for dowry death theek hai na so is case mein ab humne padha tha cruelty in cruelty when she is tortured for dowry the tor- torturing itself means cruelty but in this case when she commits suicide so it will be uh, considered as a dowry death it will not be considered as a suicide isko suicide nahi bola jayega isko bola jayega dowry ठीक है ना इसको बोला जाएगा डाउरी डेथ कि सपोज अ वुमेन इज हरास फॉर डाउरी एंड शी कमिट्स सुसाइड दैट इट देन इट वुड बी डाउरी डेथ ठीक है ना वैसे तो उसके ऊपर अबैटमेंट टू सुसाइड भी लगाया जा सकता है बट देयर इज अ स्पेसिफिक सेक्शन व्हिच वाज इंसर्टेड इन 1983 इफ आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग 86 सॉरी 1986 नाउ वी लुक एट व्हाट आर द Ingredients of dowry death. Okay, it is saying where the death of a woman. ध्यान से सुनना. Where the death of a woman is caused by any burns or bodily injury. or injury or occur other than under normal circumstances now one thing is the death of a woman is caused either by burns so repeatedly we have seen that the women are burnt when they are subjected to a demand of dowry and she is not able to fulfill the demand naturally what happens is ki the in-laws try to burn her and then then they try to portray ki she has committed suicide so one thing is the death should be either be through burns or by injury or third is other than north under normal circumstances 
ठीक है डेथ इज अंडर सच कंडीशन विच आर नॉट नॉर्मल ठीक है नॉर्मल कंडीशन में डेथ वो नहीं है सपोज अ गर्ल डाइज ऑफ कैंसर सपोज सपोज अ गर्ल डाइज ऑफ एनी अदर डिजीज आफ्टर मैरिज तो वो डाउरी डेथ नहीं है बिकॉज अ डेथ इज अंडर नॉर्मल सर्कमस्टांसिस बट सपोज इट डाइज एंड इन द पोस्टमार्टम इट कम्स आउट दैट शी हेज डाइड आफ्टर कंज्यूमिंग पॉइजन तो इज इट अ डेथ अंडर नॉर्मल सर्कमस्टांसिस टेल मी after the death of a woman it was reported that the death was due to consuming of some kind of poison so is it a death under normal circumstances no will there be a doubt that ki whether she has herself committed suicide or she has been killed by the or she has been killed by the in laws or we can say is it not will there not be a doubt ki why a woman who is in a marriage Why would she commit suicide? There will be doubt कि वो सुसाइड क्यों करेगी ठीक है ना तो फर्स्ट थिंग इज हर डेथ शुड इधर बी बाय बर्नस और बाय इंजरी और अंडर एनी सर्कमस्टांसिस विच आर नॉट नॉर्मल वन सेकेंडली विद इन सेवन ईयर्स सात साल के अंदर उसकी डेथ विद इन सेवन ईयर्स ऑफ मैरिज सी by studying the different cases the law has been evolved and the law presumes and the law has seen that most of the instances of dowry is generally after marriage most of the instances of dowry dowry is just after marriage before or not before because before she is not living with the in laws she is living with her parents after she is married and after that after the instance of after the incident of marriage after the occasion of marriage the demands for dowry comes up the in laws will not demand dowry when the marriage has happened or when that when 10 years have elapsed since marriage marriage ko 10 saal ho gaye uske baad koi dowry nahi mangega theek hai na 8 saal baad koi dowry nahi mangta generally it is seen that nobody demands dowry after 8 years 5 years 6 years if they have to demand dowry they demand it just after marriage theek hai na so that's why a time limit has been inserted that within 7 years of marriage if her death happens out of burn or injury or under abnormal circumstances and third requirement is it is shown that soon before her death she was subjected to cruelty or harassment by husband or relative of husband in connection with डिमांड ऑफ डाउरी ठीक है ना नाउ वट इज इंपॉर्टेंट इज देर इज अ डेथ ऑफ अ वेमेन अब जो वेमेन की डेथ है इट इज अंडर एब नॉर्मल सर्कमस्टांसिस ठीक है उसने जहर खा लिया और शी इज बर्न हर सेल्फ और देर इज अ इंजरी ऑन हर बॉडी ठीक है सेकेंडली इट हैपन विद इन सेवन ईयर्स ऑफ मैरिज मैरिज के सात साल के अंदर जो है वो फीमेल की डेथ हुई है एंड थर्ड इज बिफोर हर डेथ सून बिफोर अ डेथ अब सून का मतलब ऐसा नहीं है कि जस्ट दस मिनट पहले सो देर कैन बी रीजनेबल टाइम लैप्स और देर शेल बी अ रीजनेबल टाइम लैप्स विद इन विच डेथ शेल है ऐसा नहीं है कि द डिमांड फॉर डाउरी डिमांड फॉर डाउरी वॉज मेड थ्री ईयर्स बैक एंड नाउ द वीमेन हैज कमिटेड सुसाइड तो ऐसा नहीं होगा ठीक है ना दो दिन पहले पांच दिन पहले दस दिन पहले the women was subjected to harassment or she was made or demands for dowry was made to her so in this case mein it would be soon after her or soon before her death so third thing is it is proved that before her death she was subjected to harassment cruelty by husband harassment kyun kiya gaya uska because she was demand uh, demand of dowry was made to her so in this case it will be presumed that 
सच हजबेंड और रिलेटिव शैल बी डीम टू हैव कॉज हर डेथ अब देखो क्या चीज है वट डिज दिस सेक्शन इंप्यूट ये सेक्शन ये कह रहा है कि क्या ऐसा नहीं हो सकता कि आफ्टर मैरिज अ वेमेन कैन डाई नेचुरली इज इट नॉट पॉसिबल दैट आफ्टर मैरिज और सुन आफ्टर मैरिज और विद इन सेवन ईयर्स ऑफ मैरिज शी कैन डाई नेचुरली ऐसा हो सकता है इज इट पॉसिबल यस इट इज पॉसिबल सो डेथ कैन भी एक्सीडेंटल एक्सीडेंटल डेथ हो सकती है ठीक है ना एक्सीडेंटल में कैसे कि शी वो सफरिंग फ्रॉम अ डिसीज शी डाइड और शी सफरिड आउट ऑफ शी सफर शी डाइड आउट ऑफ एक्सीडेंट और शी सफर शी डाइड आउट ऑफ एनी डिसीज ठीक है ना वन थिंग क्या सुसाइडल डेथ भी हो सकती है कैन देर बी ए सुसाइड सपोज शी वॉज सफरिंग फ्रॉम एनी मेंटल डिसीज एंड शी कमिटेड सुसाइड हाँ जी सुसाइड भी हो सकती है नॉर्मल सर्कम चांसेस में यस और नो एंड थर्ड इज होमिसाइडल वेयर शी इज किल्ड वेयर शी इज डेलीबरेटली किल्ड तो मल्टीपल कंडीशन हो सकते हैं इधर कैन शी कैन डाई ऑफ सुसाइड इधर शी इज किल्ड और इधर शी हेज डन डाइड अंडर नॉर्मल सर्कम चांसेस बीमारी थी एक्सीडेंट हो गया नहीं थी अब इस केस में क्या है सिर्फ डेथ जरूरी नहीं है ठीक है ना देर आर मल्टीपल सर्कम चांसेस For the law, or there are multiple circumstances that have to be fulfilled before the husband or the relatives of the husband shall be deemed to have committed the death of the. अब वो क्या होगा? पहली बात तो उसकी death वो ही है burn से, जलने से. Secondly, उसकी body में injuries हैं. And thirdly, under abnormal circumstances, जहर खा लिया या फांसी लगी हुई थी. These are not normal circumstances. These are not normal circumstances of death. ठीक है ना? तो पहली थिंग इज कि डेथ जो हुई है वो या तो जलने से हुई है या इंजरी से हुई है या फिर अंडर ऑफ नॉर्मल सर्कमस्टांसिस वन सेकेंड इज विद इन सेवन ईयर्स ऑफ मैरिज कि सात सालों के अंदर हुई है शादी के एंड थर्ड रिक्वायरमेंट इज कि जस्ट सून बिफोर अर डेथ शी वॉज सब्जेक्टेड टू क्रिवेलिटी अब जब तीनों कंडीशन फुलफिल हो रही है नॉट ओनली वन ऑल थ्री ऑफ कंडीशन हैव टू बी फुलफिल्ड कि वो जली हुई थी उसकी बॉडी या इंजरी थी उसकी बॉडी पे या शी डाइड इन अननेचुरल सर्कमस्टांसेस विद इन सेवन ईयर्स ऑफ मैरिज एंड बिफोर हर डेथ शी वॉज सब्जेक्टेड टू क्रिवेलिटी फॉर डाउरी तो यहां पर तो कोर्ट कैन डीम दैट द हजबेंड एंड द रिलेटिव ऑफ हजबेंड हैव कॉज हर डेथ उन्होंने उसको मारा नाउ द हजबेंड एंड द रिलेटिव अब जरूरी नहीं है कि कोर्ट जो है वो एक एक चीज प्रूव करे कि इन्होंने कैसे मारा If the three circumstances are fulfilled, the court will presume that husband and the relative have caused her death because उसकी death से पहले आप उसको torture कर रहे थे for dowry, ठीक है और उसकी death जो हुई है वो जलने से हुई है या injury से हुई है या फिर unnatural circumstances में हुई है. So now the there are sufficient clues, there are sufficient points that prove that her death is caused by in laws for dowry. हाँ. अब ऐसा है कि इस केस के अंदर जस्ट गिव मी सेकेंड देर इज अ प्रजम्शन इन इंडियन एविडेंस एक्ट क्या अब इस केस में क्या होगा ये दो क्या इसके अंदर प्रजम्शन है कोर्ट मान के चल रही है कि उसकी डेवरी डेथ हुई है इफ द हजबेंड एंड द रिलेटिव आर एबल टू प्रूव कि नहीं शी हैज डाइट नेचुरली ठीक है उसकी जो है नेचुरल डेथ हुई है तो उस केस में फिर द हजबेंड एंड द रिलेटिव विल नॉट बी गिल्टी ऑफ डाउरी डेथ ठीक है ना हाँ अब सपोज अ वेमेन वॉज हर बॉडी वॉज फाउंड बर्न उसके आग लगी हुई थी बॉडी में शी वॉज बर्न शी वॉज हर बॉडी वॉज चार्ज वन उसकी शादी को दो साल हुए थे दो थर्डली ये भी दिखाया गया था इट कैन बी शोन दैट शी वॉज सब्जेक्टेड टू क्वालिटी फॉर और शी वॉज सब्जेक्टेड टू डिमांड ऑफ डाउरी सो कैन द कोर्ट प्रिज्यूम दैट द हजबेंड एंड इन लॉज है कोर्ट प्रिज्यूम Yes. Now, if the relatives and the husband are able to show, if they are able to show that in the present case her death was not because of any act on their part. He suppose she was cooking in the kitchen, or cylinder blast हो गया. Now, now in this case, neither the women has committed suicide nor the relatives have. बर्ड हर डेलीबरेटली अब इस केस में सुसाइड जो है वो बॉम्ब ब्लास्ट सिलेंडर गॉट ब्लास्टेड ठीक है सिलेंडर ब्लास्ट हो गया तो इस केस में क्या होगा कि इफ द हजबेंड एंड रिलेटिव आर एबल टू सो इफ दे आर एबल टू प्रूव इन अ कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ की यहां पर सिलेंडर ब्लास्ट था 
ठीक है और इस इंसिडेंट के अंदर जो है वो सिर्फ वोमन की डेथ नहीं हुई अ पर्सन हु वॉज ऑल्सो इन द होम वॉज दैमिली मेंबर उसकी भी साथ में डेथ हो गई या वो भी इंजर्ड हो गया तो इन केस के अंदर जो है कोर्ट विल नाउ नेगेट द प्रिजम्पन कोर्ट विल से नो हाँ इन्होंने क्वालिटी की थी सो दे बी पनिश फॉर क्वालिटी क्वालिटी के लिए पनिशमेंट होगी लेकिन डाउरी डेथ के लिए पनिशमेंट नहीं होगी ठीक है सो ये प्रिजम्पन है सिर्फ देर इज की देल बी डीम टू कॉज डेथ कि अगर ये सर्कमस्टांसिस इफ द सर्कमस्टांसिस आर फुलफिल्ड देन द इन लॉज आर डीम टू कॉज डेथ यहां पर यह नहीं लिखा हुआ कि दे विल बी हंड्रेड परसेंट गिल्टी ऑफ दे विल बी हेल्ड गिल्टी ऑफ कॉजिंग डेथ डीम सो इफ दे आर एबल टू रिबर्ट इट अगर वो रिबर्ट कर पाते हैं कि नहीं शी डाइड अंडर शी डाइड बिकॉज ऑफ एनी रीजन विच इन विच द हजबेंड एंड द रिलेटिव आर नॉट इन्वॉल्व कि वो थे ही नहीं उसके अंदर इन दैट केस दे विल नॉट बी हेल्ड गिल्टी ऑफ डाउरी हाँ अगर उन्होंने उसको मारा पीटा था शादी से पहले तो क्रोल्टी लगेगी तीन साल की सजा हो जाएगी मैक्सिमम बट नॉट डाउरी ठीक है ना एंड डाउरी डेथ में इन केस ऑफ डाउरी डेथ इट हैज टू बी सीन दैट द डेथ वॉज जस्ट आफ्टर द डिमांड ऑफ डाउरी वॉज मेड और जस्ट विद इन अ रीजनेबल स्पैन वेन द डिमांड ऑफ डाउरी वॉज मेड हरासमेंट वॉज मेड अब इस केस में देर वॉज अ केस ऑफ के बी पांडे वर्सिस स्टेट ऑफ के बी पांडे वर्सिस स्टेट 1995. अब इस केस में क्या हुआ अ मैरिड वेमेन वॉज सब्जेक्टेड टू क्रुअलिटी एंड फ्रीक्वेंटली डिमांड ऑफ डाउरी वॉज मेड टू हर ठीक है डिमांड ऑफ डाउरी वॉज मेड टू हर उसे डाउरी मांगी जाती थी और वन डे द हजबेंड हिट हर उसको मारा एंड शी वेंट टू हर पेरेंटल होम आफ्टर वन ईयर शी केम बैक आफ्टर टू ईयर शी केम बैक ठीक है सोलह हो गई The, there was a conciliation between the husband and the wife, the family of husband and wife, and she came back and she died within next four days. चार दिनों में उसकी death हो गई. Now can the court presume that the husband and wife, or we can say the husband and the relatives of the husband have caused dowry death? बताओ मुझे. ये fact situation समझ आया कि नहीं आया बेटा? Are you able to understand the fact situation? What happened? <clears throat> there was a couple. and the husband used to demand dowry from the wife and when she was not able to fulfill the demand of dowry he hit her with the rod and then because of that she went to her parental home so after 2 years she came back to her husband's home because in between there were a lot of people who tried to conciliate the matter so after 2 years she came back but within 4 to 5 days of coming back she died uski death ho gayi and in that period There was no evidence to show कि the the husbands or the relatives of husband has demanded dowry from her. या उसको cruelty से पेश ट्रीट किया है. In those four five days. So now can the husband and the relatives of the husband be held guilty of dowry death? Tell me. Now चाहे तो tell me. चाहे saying yes. But the thing here is बेटा, there was no evidence to show that just before her death, just before her death. She was subjected to demand of dowry. ठीक है, just before her death, she was subjected to demand of dowry, and then she committed suicide. ठीक है ना? Then she committed suicide. Court stated कि if she was so mentally disturbed, sorry, if she was so mentally, uh, <clears throat> if she was suffering so mentally, or we can say, if was so she if was so mentally agonized because of the demand of dowry. then why would she commit suicide after 2 years because she stayed at her home at her parental home for 2 years then she came back theek hai na aur wo wapas bhi aa gayi 2 saal baad then the court stated ki for this 4 5 days where she resided in the home of her husband there is no evidence to show ki unhone usko daraya dhamkaya tha dowry ke liye dobara theek hai there was no demand for dowry then If the demand was for dowry was before two years, two साल पहले demand थी, ठीक है ना? And now there is no reason to contemplate why she committed suicide after two years. अगर उसको suicide करना होता, she would have committed suicide after or before in that time when she was hit. उसने तब नहीं किया, दो साल बाद क्यों suicide करेगी? So there was enough time. So there was enough time for the mind to relax. 
why would she commit suicide after two years so the court stated ki though she has died within seven years there was also a demand for dowry but the demand for dowry was not made soon before death it was made two years back so now this death cannot be categorized as dowry death ye samajh mein aaya beta theek hai na ha agar there was an evidence ki even when she came back and then she was subjected to demands of dowry and then she would have committed suicide to yahan par jo hai husband or uh, relative of husband ke upar they would have been charged with causing dowry death lekin there was no evidence and the court stated the demand of dowry was made 2 years back so in this case the demand for dowry was not made just before death so there was no mental or we can say there was no mental compulsion on the women to commit suicide dowry death beta ye banna ye section this section is aimed to protect women isme kya hai ki a women see the this section is covering two situation dhyan se sunna in which a woman is subjected to dowry and now she is forced to commit suicide because she is so mentally harassed but dowry ki demand 5 saal pehle ki thi and the woman is dying after 5 years so within 5 years she would have got ample time to relieve herself aur 5 saal mein aur koi demand dowry ki nahi hui so in this case the husband and the relative of the husband will not be presumed to have caused death dowry death tabhi presume ki jayegi when the demand for dowry was made just within a reasonable span of time before the death of women कि वो इतनी परेशान हो गई कि शी कमिटेड हर शी कमिटेड सुसाइड आठ साल पहले पांच साल पहले तीन साल पहले डाउरी डिमांड एंड देर इज नो रीजन फॉर अ वुमेन टू कमिट सुसाइड आफ्टर थ्री इयर्स बिकॉज इन दैट टाइम शी वुड हैव गॉट एम्पल टाइम वेयर शी वुड हैव बीन एबल टू पैसीफाई हर माइंड और रिलैक्स हर माइंड ठीक है ना एंड सेकेंडली द डिमांड शेल बी विद रिलेशन टू डाउरी डाउरी की डिमांड होनी चाहिए एंड डाउरी मीन्स द with relation to marriage with relation to marriage shaadi se judi hui demand suppose after 3 years the husband says to his wife that but sir in many cases i have seen that dowry death is caused after reasonable period is over but there is no reasonable period there is no reasonable period for that i am not saying ki <coughs> उटरी There was sufficient time for the women to relax her mind. हाँ, अगर वो इतने time में relax नहीं हो पाई, now the court cannot fix the liability on the husband and the relatives. ठीक है ना? तो reasonable period of time जो है, वो इसलिए डाला गया है कि there shall not be unlimited liability on the husband. अब हो सकता था शुरू में demand करते हों dowry की, लेकिन बाद में उन्होंने बंद कर दी. And the women committed suicide after three years of demand. So now in that case, you cannot hold the husband liable theek hai na ha jab but if it is proved that within a reasonable period of time she died so now the court presumes ki because she was tortured to such an extent that she was forced to commit suicide is samajh mein aaya ha in individual cases mein it can be possible that a woman was tortured to such an extent that ab suppose she has been constantly tortured for 5 years 6 years theek hai na and the because the police threatened the husband and the relatives ab she filed a complaint police ne dara diya husband relative ko now for four months they did not ask for dowry but the women was so continuously tortured for last five years that she was mentally deranged that she was mentally disturbed ab in that case hat choti si ladai hogi husband aur wife ke beech mein and she committed suicide theek hai na now in this case the impact of demand of dowry was so much on her mind on her mind that she was forced to commit suicide so now in this case or in this situation will be sufficient to bring the case within the fold of section 304b ye samajh mein aaya beta so beta all will depend upon facts and circumstances of the case ab jaise and the court also stated there was a case of appa sahib versus state of maharashtra 
की जो डिमांड होनी चाहिए ना डाउरी पैसे की डिमांड इट शैल बी इन रिलेशन टू मैरिज इट शैल बी इन रिलेशन टू मैरिज अब सपोज आफ्टर थ्री ईयर अ गाय वॉन्ट टू स्टैब्लिश अ बिजनेस एंड ही और ही इज इन सम फाइनेंशियल एमरजेंसी नाउ ही आस्क इज वाइफ की ऐसा करो कि मुझे थोड़े पैसे मंगवा दो अपने घर से नाउ इन दिस केस द कोर्ट हेल्ड दिस इज नॉट अ केस ऑफ डाउरी हजबेंड इज आस्किंग हिज वाइफ टू हेल्प हर फाइनेंशियली ठीक है ना नाउ दिस इज नॉट अ केस ऑफ डाउरी बिकॉज इफ इट वॉज अ केस ऑफ डाउरी ही वुड हैिमांडेड द मनी जस्ट आफ्टर मैरिज शादी के बाद मांगता बट देर कैन बी सिचुएशन इन विथ द हजबेंड इज नॉट फाइनेंशियली वेल ऑफ ठीक है ना एंड ही इज आस्किंग हिज वाइफ टू हेल्प हर अब उस केस में इफ द वाइफ is mentally harassed and she commits suicide so the court stated that this is not a dowry death because the demand is not in relation to dowry because dowry ka sambandh marriage se hai to yahan par wo paise sirf marriage ke liye nahi mang raha he is asking money for his business ha uh, agar koi sirf paise isliye mang raha hai kyunki he has married the girl now this is demand is in relation to marriage aur ye ban jayega dowry lekin agar kisi aur kaaran se mang raha paise ki i have to set up a business or i am running under a debt ki main qarze mein hu He just asked for some money from your parents, or the girl was harassed to such an extent that she committed suicide. So the court stated that this is not a case of dowry, because dowry is not being asked here. It is being helped. Okay. So it all depends upon the circumstances of the, or it all depends upon the facts and circumstances of the case. So next we will read defamation, intimidation, and defamation. 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 Next we will read defamation, तो मैं एक दो क्लास में खत्म कर दूंगा देन वी विल स्टार्ट द लॉ ऑफ डॉट्स फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट वीक ओके सो एनी डाउट फॉर टूडेज क्लास ओके बेटा बेटा ये समझ में आया ना ऑफेंसेस व्हाट इज डाउरी डेथ व्हाट इज सेक्शुअल हरासमेंट व्हाट इज क्रिवेलिटी एनी डाउट ओके बेटा फाइन चलो वी विल मीट इन टूमोरोज क्लास